Welcome to Pristina. I am Josh Friedman coming to you on election day in Kosovo. Could a man who was recently arrested on a war crimes warrant become Kosovo's next prime minister? Could a party that has been setting off tear gas in the parliament parlay violent protests into a victory at the ballot box? Those are a couple questions and storylines to ponder on, <clears throat> excuse me, what is a day of snap parliamentary elections here in Kosovo. Last month, Kosovo's government collapsed following a vote of no confidence, and just 32 days later, Kosovo is voting on a new government. A uh, big factor in what derailed the last government is Kosovo's thorny relations which, with its neighbors Serbia and Montenegro. Kosovo declared independence from Serbia in 2008, but Serbia does not recognize Kosovo as an independent state. Montenegro does recognize Kosovo's independence, but Kosovo and Montenegro have a border dispute that has become a political fiasco here in Pristina. Over the past couple of years, the European Union has brokered deals between both Kosovo and Serbia and Kosovo and Montenegro. The deal with Serbia was over the creation of an association of Serb municipalities here in Kosovo. The Montenegro Agreement was a border demarcation deal that would effectively hand over some land from Kosovo to Montenegro. Both deals are quite unpopular in Kosovo, and neither made it through the parliament. Rather, they set off protests which were at times violent and at times comprised of tear gas going off in the parliament. There are also Molotov cocktails thrown right around here in the heart of Pristina, and there was a petrol bomb or two, or maybe some other type of explosive device that was thrown at this building you see here, which is the state broadcaster's headquarters. Or it had the petrol bomb was something to do with the state broadcaster. I, I might be wrong about that. I, I forget. But nonetheless, there have been violent protests here, which have been orchestrated largely by one party. That is the Vedavendosia party or movement. Vedavendosia means self-determination. And the party is effectively a leftist yet nationalist party. They are opposed to foreign involvement in Kosovo's decision making and they support there being a referendum on possibly uniting Kosovo with Albania. It is a nationalist party in the sense that it is an ethnic Albanian nationalist movement. Well, Vervan Dosje was not figured to be a factor in challenging for control of Kosovo's government, but that has changed. Vervan Dosje's popularity has shot up over the past couple years, especially among Kosovo's youth and here in Pristina. Vervan Dosje actually controls City Hall in Pristina, and both Pristina and young people in Kosovo are expected to vote heavily for Vervan Dosje today. The party, or rather coalition, that is believed by many people to be the front runner is the PDK, or PDK, the uh, Democratic, uh, excuse me, I forget, there are a couple Democratic <laughs> parties here. I believe it's the Democratic Party of Kosovo. Anyhow, the PDK is 
uh, a party and a coalition led by former leaders of the KLA, the Kosovo Liberation Army, which back in the 1990s battled Serb forces for Kosovo's independence. The man who is pictured behind me in front of the Grand Hotel here in Pristina is a former leader of the KLA, Ramushar Dinai, who has been nominated by the PD PDK as their candidate for prime minister. Haradinai has twice been acquitted of war crimes charges. Yet earlier this year, he was arrested in France on a Serbian war crimes warrant. After a few months, France let Haradinai go. They did not comply with Serbia's request to extradite him to Serbia. And just a couple months later, Haradinai now stands as possibly the leading candidate to be Kosovo's next prime minister. PDK, PDK faces a challenge uh, not only from Vedan Dosia, but also from uh, a coalition led by the former ruling party of Kosovo. They, that coalition has been losing momentum following the collapse of their government a month ago, but they could come in first, second, or third. Pro probably not first, although they, they have polled first in one or maybe several polls. The, the polls have really shown uh, a wide variety of possible outcomes over the, the one month in which there has been campaigning. Regardless of who wins though, or who comes in first today, that party or coalition will probably need to form a broader coalition in order to form a government, and that process could be messy. Following Kosovo's last parliamentary elections in 2014, it took six months to form a new government. We shall see what happens this time. Uh, regardless of the outcome, I will be reporting to you on today's vote. If there are protests here in Pristina, I will try to get you some footage and I will try to discuss with you the implications of today's vote, both for Kosovo and for the region. I will be getting back to you later. For now, goodbye from the heart of Pristina.